Today we're building a DIY version of the EcoFlow Delta Pro. This is a fantastic unit, but it does cost quite a bit of money. So today we're gonna to build a more powerful system for less money, and also a system that you can expand to any size that you wish. In the DIY version, you'll be able to build in less than an hour. So first, let's cover the features of the EcoFlow and what you get for the money. First off, this unit is $3,700. And for that much money, you get an impressive AC output of 3,600 watts with these outlets in the front. If you want to connect two of these units together, it will actually produce 240 volts, which can run mini split heat pumps, but you cannot run EV chargers. We tested that already on this channel, and that's one of the biggest limitations of this system in my testing. Next, the battery capacity is 3,600 watt hours with the lithium iron phosphate cells. Next, the max PV input is 1600 watts at 150 volts, which is pretty limited compared to the competition. Not for solar generators, but for DIY systems. So we'll get into this more in a second. Next, it has a built-in AC charger with a maximum output of 1800 watts with 120 volts. If you step it up to 240 volts, you can do 3000 watt charging. So still very impressive, but it does cost 3000 $3,700. So let's build something that has more power, more capacity, more features, and it's cheaper than this. And this is it. This is a complete system. We have an all-in-one solar power box by MPP Solar. This is an LV6548. Lots of companies are selling this with their own brands like SunGold Inverters, um, Signature Solar with the 6500EX. And all we did was connect it to a server rack battery, which is the cheapest way to get a lithium iron phosphate battery today with some battery cables. This took me less than five minutes to construct, and this is more powerful than an EcoFlow Delta Pro. If you wanna connect solar panels, there's MC4 adapters over here, making it easier to connect solar panels than the EcoFlow Delta Pro, because you have to use an adapter. For this, you have two separate MPPTs, and you plug it right into the box. Next, the AC input connects right here with a terminal block, and the AC output also connects right here, but with its own terminal block. You can use conduit, you can use cable, you can use an extension cord if your loads are pretty small, but yeah, it all connects right here. Also, the LV6548s always have a screen that you can remove, and you can actually mount this wherever you wish with an ethernet cable. And this is how you turn it on or off. So if you wanna mount this in the living area of an RV, for example, you can do so and then run an ethernet cable out to your system. And then you can hold down enter and then change the settings to whatever you wish. And I have lots of videos covering how to do that, so I'll have those listed below. And that's it, this is a complete system. Now let's go through the numbers and what you get for the money. So first, how much does it cost? These LV6548s cost between $1,300 and $1,500. And there is some variation on features with the LV6548 depending on who you buy it from. So I actually have a buyer's guide on my website that shows all of the differences and the prices. The most popular one right now is the EG4 6500EX because it has a max input voltage of 500 volts and they offer the cheapest one around so that one is $1,300. Next the battery is a server rack lithium iron phosphate and these goes for $1,500. The max you'll pay for this capacity is $1,750. The reason I chose the trophy battery for this video is the terminals are larger and it can charge and discharge with 100 amps. The EG4 battery has smaller terminals and I didn't want to put these larger cables on it and the SOK costs more money. The trophy battery has a lower price and all of the features that we need and it has internal heaters so if you're in a cold environment that might help you. Now if we use the 6500 EX by EG4 in a trophy battery 100 amp hour 48 volt model the total cost would be $2,800. Now let's talk about what you get output capacity wise for that money. So first the AC output capacity capacity of the EcoFlow Delta Pro was 3,600, but with this unit, this is 6,500 watts, but because we're using a single server rack battery that can only output 100 amps, we can only safely output 4,800 watts 
from this unit. If you expand this system and add more batteries, you can easily output 6,500 watts. But in this configuration for a budget system, it's gonna be 4,800 watts. Next, the battery capacity of this server rack battery is 5,120 watt hours. I mean, for the money with lithium iron phosphate, I don't think you can beat that. Next, the max PV input of the solar charge controller is 4,000 watts for each MPPT, which is 8,000 watts with two separate solar panel arrays. But because we only have a single battery, the max input is also 4,800 watts. If you had a second battery, you could easily easily handle 8,000 watts at that input. And the max input voltage is much higher. Even a basic LV6548 like this can handle 250 volts. If you're using the 6500EX, you can do 500 volts. The EcoFlow Delta Pro can only do 150 volts. So no comparison, this thing can handle a real sized array. Now this unit has an AC charger built in which you access with the AC input. And this can actually charge at 5,700 watts but because we have a single battery for a budget system, you can only charge it 4,800 watts. But still, that is way better than an EcoFlow Delta Pro. And for the money, I don't think you can beat it. I mean, seriously, this is so simple. Anybody could build this in less than 30 minutes and it's more powerful than everything else on the market. So now I'm gonna show the numbers so you can see the comparison for yourself. Look at the difference in price and how much more power and capacity you get with the home built system. And this is almost plug and play. You just have two cables. Just make sure that the positive is connected to the positive and the negative is connected to the negative. And then don't turn the battery on until everything is connected. Also be sure to follow the startup procedure for your server rack battery because it has what's called a pre-charge resistor circuit that will charge up the capacitors in your all-in-one system. And typically it's very easy. You usually just connect the cables and then turn on the on and off switch and that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the downsides of a DIY system. So first off, it is not as beginner friendly. On the Delta Pro, you have these outlets and these USB ports, you just plug stuff in and that's the end of it. With this one, you actually have to connect your loads to a terminal block and you have to connect your own cable to the AC input. Next, the Delta Pro has wheels. You can move it around. It's still 100 pounds, but it's easier to move around than this. I guess you could put some wheels on this. I've seen some people put these on hand trucks and that is a mobile system, but it's not gonna be nearly as pretty or nearly as compact as the Delta Pro. Next, if you want 240 volt output from the LV6548, you're gonna have to use communication cables and wire up your own sub panel and that takes some skill. I have beginner videos on how to do that if you wish, but it's a lot harder than this system right here. You just plug in the cable with the double voltage hub and boom, you have 240 volts. But you could easily wire this up in less than an hour. It's not hard. Or you could get an electrician to do it or a friend. Um, it's very easy to set these up. It's not that hard to do. The Delta Pro might be easier to use, but man, if you spend a little bit less and you give it just a couple hours of work, you can have something that's way more powerful. I mean, just the input capacity alone. This is only 1600 watts. This is a maximum of 8,000. Like it is a night and day difference here. And I can stack up as many of these batteries as I want and they're cheaper. If you buy the expansion battery for this, it costs a lot of money. And to expand this battery, you just need some more battery cables. Just some two watt gauge cables going from positive to positive and negative to negative for a second battery. And that's it, you can stack these up as much as you wish. So there are pros and cons, but man, for the money, you just cannot beat this. Server rack battery in an all-in-one system beats the heck out of a solar generator any day. Now let's say you don't need all of this power and you have an RV. Let's make a system that's actually smaller. Now instead of the LV6548, which is pretty big and very powerful, if all you need is 3000 watt output capacity, you could just use the EG4 3000 EHV instead. And this is pretty powerful. It actually has a maximum input voltage of 500 volts, even though it's very small. 
small and it can handle 5,000 watts of solar input. And it would work perfectly with a single server rack battery because the charge and discharge is 100 amps on most of these and this can support that 100%. And the AC charger is 3,800 watts. So another option and very easy to build. This one actually comes with the cables and the circuit breaker to connect this to a battery. And it has communication cables if you use it with an EG4 battery. And that was the easiest communication system we've ever set up on this channel. So if all you need is 3000 watts of 120 volts, this would be a lot easier and cheaper than the LV6548. Let's see how cheap that would be. And this one's $750. So with these two devices, it would cost 2,250 bucks. If I got the EG4, version I would get the EG4 version battery as well so you have the ability for communication but it's not required but I would just get it anyways but yeah 2250 bucks and in most ways it's more powerful than the EcoFlow Delta Pro and you get more capacity so you're saving over a thousand dollars and you're getting a much more powerful system and this would be a lot smaller look at how it would fit on here you could fit it like this or put it on a wall or whatever you think. But this is pretty small. You could put some wheels on this and actually make this a mobile system. So the EcoFlow Delta Pro is nice, but there are cheaper options. And man, if you have a large solar panel array, there's no way you're gonna choose this over something like this. This takes an hour to build, it's a lot cheaper and way more power. So I hope you guys like this quick video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.